Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, the reason I'm I'm contacting you is because I was uh, so touched, impressed um, by your interview on the Buddha the gas pump. Very direct, very no nonsense, and it was just like a breath of fresh air. No, no fluff, just. So that's uh, I love that. Um, the reason uh, I'm, I, I'd like to speak to you is um, I, I kind of um, had a, an awakening about four years ago, um, and all my life I've been ever since I was a young boy I've been searching for enlightenment. That was my number one thing, and I thought if I didn't get it, then my life wouldn't be worth living because it's if it's the truth then what's the point in living if, if you don't know the truth? That's what I thought. So, okay, so a few years ago I had this um, experience. It lasted about 45 minutes, and it was what I can only call oneness. Just the mind wasn't there, and it was just obvious. I was laughing because it was like the universe suddenly said, I'm here, and, you know, I was everything, but I was nothing. And that had, has had an extremely deep uh, effect. Uh, I, I can't really say me anymore. It doesn't make sense. And um, there's just thoughts. And um, so, uh, anyway, that's been going on for like four years now. And I've, I've spoken to uh, teachers and, you know, so-called awakened people, um, a couple especially, um, if I don't have any questions. But um, obviously I still have questions because I'm contacting you. Um, and I guess what I'm interested in, in your perspective and your advice maybe, is on self-inquiry. And related to that is doubt. Occasionally I have doubt. You know, I, I think, well, this, this is it. I can't say more than this is it. There's no more to, to it for me than that this is it. And yet this is nothing. I, I, it's just not, you know. But then self-inquiry and hearing you on some of the videos talk about the practice and um, I think, oh, hang on, have I missed something? I suppose that's the doubt. My mind thinks, well, maybe there's, maybe this is nothing. Maybe this is like the tip of, of, of everything. And maybe there's so much more that I'm, not even looking at um, and of course that's just a thought and, and this time I'm following it because I'm talking to you but since I heard you speak a few weeks ago I've been sitting I always I sit every day I, I teach mindfulness so it's part of my job if you like is to sit and uh, I've been doing the, the self inquiry and, and even in the space of a few weeks some some things have been moving especially really nice, heavy, um, beautiful feelings. A feeling that I, I used to have when I first had this experience that I can only call um, heavy beauty. It's too much. And it feels like I'm breathing through my heart. It's, it's a very beautiful experience. But so what? You know, it's just an experience. It's, it's nothing. Um, but I'm just interested in what you have to say about that and, and the mind and doubt and the arrogance of the mind and self-inquiry, is it something I, I still need to look at, examine? Um, I'm just kind of interested in hearing what you have to say. Who you are is silence, and only silence recognizes itself. You can hear that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So, can you stay with the eyes open for a moment? Sorry, sorry. That's okay. And be still. Within the silence, 
thoughts appear and disappear. You're that silence. Yet, the habit of the mind is to dream and then believe that what he dreams is reality. So then, from the mind's perspective, he says, I had an awakening a moment ago, yet it imagines the moment ago. There is no really moment ago. And that way it goes into the past, validating there is a past and therefore imagining there is a future. Yet who you are never moves. It never says anything. So if you can stay, and this is where the limitation of the word, the attention fixed on that, which recognizes itself by itself, this is self-inquiry without mental movement. Listen to the silence. Thought doesn't know silence. Thought is a movement within the field of awareness, which is another word for silence. Just for a moment, let the mind rest in that. Because the silence which is you has no boundaries, nor it has no beginning nor end, it's infinite. Only the mind, which is a tiny aspect that appears within the silence, has all kind of stories about it. If the stories about the silence our thoughts is not the silence itself. It's not a sense felt experience. Because leave the story about the experience of a moment ago. And you who you are never talks about it because it never moves it never says anything this is all the mind gaining you which it cannot gain it appears within you it's like a fish appears within the oceans tries to gain the ocean and you're the ocean not the fish recognize the fish and check am I this thought that thinks all these stories and who am I without this thought when it appears and if there is no answer if the mind is not active you remain silently aware to itself by itself and this is what's called abiding resting in the beingness of who you are. Sometimes I would wonder if or it feels like an effort, like an addition to do this, to do an inquiry or to even sit. It feels like I don't, there's no one here that needs to do that to get something. This is I do it anyway. No, no. Stop. 
This is a story the mind tells itself, validating its existence. Saying there's nobody there is the same one who says, Hey, look at me, I am there. It's the same one. You never say anything. This is discernment. Discern that. Discernment can be active mental or a, a direct seeing. Like the eyes see an object. You don't need to think about it. Just an example. There is the same direct seeing internally without mental chatter. So when I hear or if I would say there is nobody here, I say actually there is somebody here. There is. There is, look, there is nobody, I'm here. Just replacing its idea with nobody. Okay? Once you recognize who you are, which is your nature, it's you, silently aware of itself then every movement is the mind. Just see that it's not you or discriminate. I'm not this mind. That's a movement and an effort. Yet it's the mind undoing itself. It's not you. You never move. This is clarity. That's right. As long as you think you practice, it appears like you are a separate entity. So you mistake who you are with somebody who is not, which with the thoughts. Just see that clearly. That's I read a, a, a sentence, a quote from somebody, and it said... Um, Something like, your life is not yours. Don't, don't worry about it. Let go of your life. Something like that. So maybe there's a slight idea that I'm the one practicing or something like that. I don't know, maybe. Okay, and who are you? The idea or the one who is idea free the idea or the the one who is idea free who are you well well I'm not yeah I'm not the idea I'm not what what comes and goes but I but what I am see for me even to say I still is like there's something with that. I, I, to me, the word I, it just, it, it doesn't have, I can't say who I am. Uh, I used to say it, everything was awareness. I mean, it's still another word. But um, I don't know who I am. That's not, uh, not true. Hmm. You know who you are and then the mind thinks that you are a physical body. Distinguish between the two. Knowing who you are is not, not through thought process. Thinking you are a physical body is through an I that thinks it is a physical form. So when there is no thought, who you are knows itself by itself. This is true knowing, direct experience of you. And when you start thinking, it's the mind, it's not you. It's all discernment, it's the key. For thousands of years they brought, the mind has to discern itself and that's how it rests in you. So you are not going through a process because who you are never move. The mind returning back to you. 
unraveling undoing yes it, to me it, f- it feels like this kind of uh, process the one of self inquiry let's, let's call it that it feels very different in a way to the to the okay, to talk about memory to the experience I had some years ago which was one of let's say everythingness like say I was one with everything let's put it like that so it was expansion it wasn't that I wasn't everything it was that I was like I was merged or bled into everything and sometimes I still have that so well it's it's always like that but sometimes it comes strong it's so a, to kind it's, of step it's a, back it's a trap what they hear is a trap. Okay, okay. The mind is looking for an experience that is no longer present and it compares, mm-hmm. so it creates an illusion of continuity. Mm-hmm. Leave this. If the experience appears and disappears, it's not real. It's not you. Keep discerning. You cannot give up who you are, yet you can remove what you're not. Keep the mind, let it, don't land, because any landing on any idea, including that experience, which is no longer present, is just a memory. It's like going to the bathroom. What's the difference? What's the difference? That's a release, and the other was a different release. This is the safest journey for the mind to rest into the beingness of who you are. The mind is driven by gaining, so if you're going to gain any experience, just recognize that this is not you. Yeah. Yeah. And I do feel, if you like, that uh, maybe up to a year ago, that that experience which was so amazing at the time, now is like uh, dirt. I just, I'm not, it's gone. And like I say, you know, there's just this. And it's not this isn't even here. So there is a resting in the, in this. This, this means you're pointing out what this. What, what does it mean, this? Yeah, this is pointing... Because I hear this like this. So is it yeah. out or is it you? Because... Right. What is it? Is... I guess I mean everything. Like me and... Well, me and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. there's see, duality. Yeah. There is two. Let me... Uh, let. Can you be still for a moment? And please don't move the head, okay? Oh, you move the head. Don't move the head. Hope oh, you move the head. Stay still. Good. You can just speak. Do you have a thought? Wait and watch. Thoughts appear spontaneously anyhow within the field of awareness.
in the background of awareness it is you and in that, this background thoughts appear and disappear all the attention we draw in you can use either, either the body sensation or the sense of awareness which is you and just wait, not from the mind's point of view because awareness is before a thought is behind the thought itself it's a sense felt experience Can you sense it? You can say yes or no. It doesn't change the experience. Can you sense a sense of I amness? Or it's the thought, sense there is a more feeling of a thought of me thinking. As a, a sense of stillness, okay. of space. Good. This stillness is you. And within this thinness, because it is like space, thoughts appear and disappear. Yet it doesn't touch the thinness. Fix the attention on that. And when thoughts appear, what happens? When they catch the mind's attention, it goes into like a tunnel. It narrows so the stillness is overlooked and the thought appears to be real. If the stillness is omnipresent, the thoughts don't have any presence themselves. So they don't catch the mind's attention and the mind can rest within you, which is stillness. second that's good it doesn't matter because what I heard and then I think and that's when the doubt arise you have to discern that doubt and if that's the only clue right now there is is that feeling fix the attention on that and discern the thoughts the movement and that feeling that is absolutely still maybe that's only the reflection it would open that's the clue there's no other clue right now so it doesn't matter what clue one has as long as they can recognize to discern there's when there's a movement of thought and when there's stillness and no thought that's the clue you have to fix the attention on that for it for the mind to rest and go deeper and rest into the beingness of you. Uh, 
I, <coughs> pardon me. I do have a question about uh, this uh, about discernment. I can sit and ev everything that happens arises, thought, feeling. I can see it's not what I am. It's not even really there. It's empty. It moves. It's gone. It's like smoke. And then there's the subtle, all the subtle stuff, which is like at the back. The the way I, you know, the feelings in my head, the pulsing, the and then images and memory that feel like they come from much younger, when I was younger, like stored. I don't know, something like this. It feels like I'm going back. And that's hard to see, but also that's a movement. And every time I think I feel myself or feel a sensation, however deep, however subtle, I see well, it's not me because it's moving. It's not there, really. And I'm, if you like, watching. I, I'm, I'm aware. Okay. But then I, I can't see if I can only know what I'm not. I can only see, I can only experience what I am not. Experience is what I am not. But then the doubt, if you like, is do I get to experience what I am? Does it turn around and have some kind of jhana, jhana experience or I don't know? Yes. There is a difference. Every experience of the mind is through the filter of thoughts, thinking. Direct experience is when there is no thought. You experience directly you because there is no the illusion of separation that the mind creates. Also awareness is not aware of thought. It's the mind aware of the thought. It's in the in every thought there is the 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 seer the seen and the the seeing like within the physical eye the eye sees an object and the object is seen and there is the action of seeing all happens in the eye itself in every thought there is the seer seen and seen so awareness is not aware of thought, it's the mind. Awareness is only aware of itself. So when there is still an awareness of thought is of the mind. When the thought subside, awareness is aware of itself and it is directly experienced as you. And within it, thoughts can appear and think about the experience, yet the experience is not a thought. And the thought is not the experience. Okay. So you're saying there is a, a qualifying experience. A direct as experience if, of who you are. Yes, a direct merging, meeting. Uh, no, nothing to do with meeting. That separation. Yeah. Direct experience is you. So there is, you're saying there is a quali that qualifying experience? Stillness is a direct experience. It can only be experienced, it cannot understood, be understood. Any understanding is of the thoughts, mind. Experience, there's nothing to understand. So the understanding is about the dream, nothing to do with reality. Reality can be experienced and lived. It cannot be understood. The, the dream can be understood to be as not real. That what happens when you wake up from the dream. In the mind you understand it was just a dream. It was not real. Yet it doesn't give you the direct experience of who you are. It just brings clarity to the mind to see that whatever it thinks is imaginary. A dream. It dreams. He dreams the past, he dreams the future, when actually 
all there is is what is and without a thought is you see the mind is not hanging out in that space of stillness you are that stillness It's like you being the room and then the room would say, I'm hanging out in the room. No. The body would say, hey, I'm hanging out in the room. Yet the body is separate from the room. So the room in this metaphor is who you are, the stillness. And the body in this metaphor is the mind, is the I, thought. So, um, to, let's say, experience what you are directly, first of all, I, I guess, is a discernment of everything that you're not. Yeah, and it's, on, it's only take one, just discern, discern the first thought as it arises, and once it subsides, if the mind is, is quiet, then you remain. It's not everything. There's no everything, it's just a concept and the mind goes to the past and imagines all kind of thoughts. We, the mind only have one thought at a time. It just moves really quickly. So when, you, when the mind discerns itself, cuts and inquires, if it's mentally, then it slows, it cuts the movie. It doesn't let it expand into a dream. And then it easily rests inside you. See, the mind is walking in London. So it goes like this. A person walks in London and everyone he meets, he asks, do you know where London is? I have to get to London. How would I know that I am in London? Can I experience London? This is the mind looking for who you are. Who you are is London and the person who's walking in London is the mind trying to look for who you are. Let it rest and who you are remain. Yeah. This is why it doesn't matter whether the mind tells me I had this experience I come and tell you you are already the stillness you are already pure awareness and then just the mind comes appears within you and says thinks I am a physical form it thinks I'm a separate entity it thinks I have to gain you and I say ah 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 that's a wrong understanding you forgot you or the mind forgot who you are and now it tries to gain you like an object and it can't it has to rest within you because you're not an object you're pure consciousness you illuminate yourself by itself and everything else the thought appears because of your light. So, what is the what is the relationship, if you like, between, say, consciousness and thought, or consciousness and mind? No relationship. None whatsoever. It's like, tell me, what's the relationship? between the sun and the earth. Is, does the sun have relationship with the earth? Or does it illuminate itself and then all the rays are reaching the earth and maybe other stars, does it really care if the earth disappear? Does the sun lose the light when the earth disappear? And does the sun really know the earth? And if I'll take another example, 
what's the relationship of the screen with the movie? Does it have any? See, this is this is this is what uh, this bit interests me because um, you know if, if if you were to ask me now, it, it just this is it. This this uh, everything that's happening to me is. The consciousness—it's—it's—it's it's, it's fused, or it's—it's it's, uh, you know, the, in in Buddhism they say uh, emptiness is form, and form is emptiness. So it's it's two ends of the same stick. There's not some kind of separate thing, and so that's very much my 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 understanding, if you like, or at least the feeling I have. So to say there's. Because to say there's no relationship, it, it, it sounds like there's two things, which of course there's not. Like there's consciousness and then there's this other thing happening over here called the world and universe and it's got nothing to do with anything. My mm. understanding, if you one, like, one second. is like let's, it's, let's it's, make it's it. one thing. Yeah. Mm, where do you perceive the world? Where? Yes. Well, in in awareness, in consciousness. Is awareness aware aware of the world? But actually, I'm not even sure about awareness. I mean, I say awareness; it's okay. just a word. All I know is this experience I'm having now. That's all I know. So if I give you a pill and you fall asleep, what happens? Yeah, <laughs> nothing. Okay, so who perceives the world? And where do you perceive it? I gave the answer already. Where, where, do, where do I perceive the world? Yes. Well, yeah, in, in consciousness. Maybe in, in awareness the, in the mind, isn't it? In the mind. Because when you fall into deep sleep and the mind subsides, is there a world for you? In your experience, do you have a world? Do you have a physical form then? Do you know you are a man or a woman? Is there yeah. a moon? But I'm not. I like that it, analogy. One second. You know? Is there? It's but not an analogy. It's an experience. It is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it is. But I, I'm not aware. It's an experience I'm not aware of. Because there is ignorance there and bliss in deep sleep. See, knowledge is really essential. And knowledge is for the mind to to see. It's an it's a inner seeing. So it's light that removes darkness. And the three states are really key. Watch the videos. I think, I don't know, that maybe I explain waking state, dreaming state and deep sleep. And if I don't, please let me know. We'll videotape it. Say, so I don't go over the videos. I have no idea. Somebody is taping and they put them up. So I don't really check them, watch them or nothing. So the three states are really key for clarity. Because in the waking state, the mind goes outward and imagines the objects outside of itself because of the five senses that are open. In the dreaming state, the five senses close down the mind has dream visions, yet there is no external objects. So there is no a gross body, there is no house external, there is no external world, there is only inner world, subtle world, thoughts, visions. And in the deep sleep state, which is dreamless state, there is no even dream visions. 
So there is no subtle world nor gross world, external world. Yet you remain except there is no memory for the mind because it's in ignorance. So when it wakes up, it says, I don't remember what happened. I have no idea actually there was such a state of deep sleep. Yet the whole world is withdrawn to you. Yes. One, one teacher I used to see uh, said that in deep sleep, that's, uh, if you like, nirvana, that's parinirvana, that's, it's the nothing, it's the pure, if you like. You'd say you, you are enlightened every night when you go to sleep, because it's, everything is extinguished. It's just a pointer, because when you experience yourself, the real self, with no thought, it's not like deep sleep because there is no ignorance in that experience. So that where awareness is aware of itself by itself. So don't let the mind now imagine what it is in deep sleep because it, there is, it is absent there. It rests. And look for that experience in the waking state. Just recognize when there is a movement of thought and when there is no thought Fix the attention on that. The mind, the world is perceived in the mind because I would ask the question is the world within the mind or the mind within the world? Well, I'd say. The world is the mind. The mind is the world. Okay, so the world is in the mind or the mind is in the world? <laughs> uh, well, I, I mean, I've never met, I've never found anything called mind. Mind is a bundle of thoughts. Yeah. I mean, I can say the world is in the awareness of it. So uh, when there is no thought, is there a world? Well, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the word world is a thought, so... So when there is yeah. no thought, there is no world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Therefore discriminate between stillness and thoughts and leave the objects alone mm. this is discrimination or if the mind goes out and imagines the world discriminate between what is in reality what's happening and your thoughts about it because yeah. the moment you perceive life, reality, basically the thoughts start to react to it or label it. Means they superimpose themselves on it, discriminate it. So it brings you back. The whole discernment is between thoughts and awareness, nothing to do with the world. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. It's funny to see, to see that. Uh, it's like it's, it's a bit worrying almost to see how much of, of the mind is stories well okay it's all stories but when you see it and go oh my god it's, this is all stories what, what will be left because when it's seen it, it, it loses its uh, power if you like it and that's my practice is just to watch Everything, feelings, thoughts, everything. Except feelings, feelings. Um, first of all, from the mind perspective, I don't experience feelings. Unless I identify with the thought and believe it to be real. And second, who I am 
doesn't even have a thought, so it can never have a feeling. So feeling is just a, an alarm clock to wake the mind up, to realize it is trapped, locked into a thought. Believing it to be real means it locked into a dream. That's all. It's a waking, wake up call, wake up from the dream. So then you shift the attention to the thoughts and you leave the emotion which is a physical reaction in the body to a belief, to a thought, that's all. You move from the sensation, the bodily sensation. So, yeah, so, so far my practice, if you like, has just been to watch, as I say, watch everything. And then it, it's just obvious that there's nothing there. Watching is not enough. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm uh, understanding from what you're saying. That's what I've done so far, is just watch everything and be empty. But now you're saying, okay, turn the attention back on itself. That's right. The only true watching is watching, means awareness is watching itself. There's nothing else it watches. If, it, if you're watching the mind, you're still in the mind's perspective. Just shift the attention from it. Or cut it by discrimination. I'm not this thought. And don't keep back. If your mind is quiet, one discernment, and after that discernment, there's no thought that appears, you, the attention is fixed on itself. You. Awareness is aware of itself. This is abiding. So abiding in, let's say, let's say abiding in the present moment no. is not quite what you're talking about. No, not at all. Okay. It's abiding in the presence of who you are. The present moment, we would call it, it's a moment in time, means it's movement. It's yeah. what we call life. That's the only moment there is when we perceive life. So yeah, in perspective of the of the dream, if you like, it's cool. It's cool to, if in the dream to be in the present moment because it's the only moment. But so what? Because it's still. A I don't find in the it. Dream. I don't find it cool at all. What's cool about that? It's a dream. Unless you're interested in what's real, and that's what I heard you say since you were young. Are you interested in the dream, in what's not real, or in reality? If you're interested in reality, you have to fix the attention on what's real and not fix the attention on what's cool and the dream. And I don't find the dream cool because I find the dream is scary. Because it's constantly changing. And if I think it is real, then, then one moment the dream is like that, the next moment it changes. It's not stable. So I don't, I don't find something that is not real to be cool. And when I experience, or you experience the reality, then you don't even have the thought it's cool. You're just being that. Yeah. Otherwise, still the mind is too interested and invested in the dream. Yeah, that's what I'm understanding from what you're saying. And it's, uh, it's refreshing. Yeah. And so, just to uh, recap, if you like, about the attention, and I said, yeah, but it feels like a feeling, and I'm not a feeling, but you say it's a clue, it's a clue. Yeah, so if there is no thought, yeah. you fix the attention on that, and therefore you can discern the thought. Or ask a question. When a thought appears, it already appeared anyhow. You just ask the question, without this thought, who am I? If there is no answer, silence, which is you, remains, you stay as that until the next thought appears. And you follow that question again. 
And if that doesn't work, the mind has to awaken and change and approach, meet the thought that arose out of habit, to examine it so the mind rests. Because if you watch the thought, once the first thought appears, when it materializes, many thoughts spring forth, you get lost in a dream. Out of habit. And it's yes. still not you, yet that's what the mind habitually conditioned to. How easy it would, how easy it is, to feel some subtle subtleties, and and go ah, that's that's, that's me, that's I. This that, this fuzzy feeling is I. That's a thought. Sorry. You describe a thought talking within the sense felt experience of you. So it can be discounted. Yeah, discriminated or inquire. Yeah. Without this thought, who am I? Or you can approach it direct, am I this thought? That thought is already gone, just the question remains and disappears. Mm. And is, is this practice um, this undoing <clears throat> uh, well I was going to say do you do it for the rest of your life but then you know whose life and when, life when when is when is anybody's life when is it happening when is it appearing The mind rests after the question. Then there is no life. There is you. And you is not separate from anything, yet it alone exists. As long as I believe the memory of the past to be real, I believe there is a future. Yeah, uh, I think you've um, you've helped. You've definitely helped. You've uh, shone a light on on some questions or doubts. I have, that I have, or attachments even. Anyone who is, whose mind is doing the work sincerely and undoing itself, I'm available to point so the mind would continue to rest within the beingness of who you are. Therefore, you can contact me anytime any question, any doubt, let the mind put it into use and experience for yourself because that's the ultimate. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for your time. You're welcome. All the very best. Same to you, Alon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.